Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and today is a great day in the Auto Edits garage because I'm mounting up a set of these BF Goodrich KM3 tires on this bad boy. Yes, the Patagonias have 35,000 miles on them, actually more than that, and it's just time to retire those and mount up the new stuff. This video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to mount these up onto these beadlock wheels here, right here in the garage, and explain why I picked this tire. First up, let's talk BFG KM3s, why that? Now, that isn't a super hard decision in the off-road world. I started my Jeep and Journey on a set of BF Goodrich KM2 tires. It was just the go-to brand, the mud terrain tires, just like it was the step up from the, alter, the KO2s, the all-terrain tires. And I was super happy, I loved the white raised white lettering on them um, and they just kind of spoke to me and it's kind of the brand I have the most emotional connection to so it's easy to go back there but this is the big reason why I sw swapped it up now I've been really fortunate to even in the relatively short amount of time I've been doing off, you know some se more serious off-roading to try a vast uh, array of tires and I want to just say right off the get-go here the Patagonians I don't have a complaint Performance wise, they've done everything I needed to do. They got abnormally good gas mileage because they have this very dense block down the middle here. So this tire was actually really good. Didn't go away from that as I went to the BFGs. Again, mostly the emotion I have, the connection I have with the brand. Secondly, I see people, drivers that I respect driving on this very tire. Now, that speaks the most to me right now. There's a lot of options out there. There's literally, I loved, come, come to think of it, I love the Nitto grapplers that I put on the truck. The looks of those were great. They actually felt really good. And again, I'm just sort of drawn towards this thing. And they got just some little bit of magic right in here. This has that new crawler compound. And it's funny, they have, I memorized some specs for the video, it has a 27% thicker sidewall than the KM2s that I ran and 8% more traction over the, the past tire, the rubber compound on the older ones. None of that made the difference in me going out and finding this tire. I, I memorized that afterwards. I already bought the thing. I'm trying to just convey information to you guys. Now, really quick, let's talk about the size. Now, these are going, I'm going back down <laughs> to 37s. Now, I was going to, I ran the 38s here and I love them. They were doing great on the Jeep. Now, I'll try to put them together so you get a good comparison here. So, since I was running the 38s here with good success, the Jeep, the suspension was dialed in for that. I had my bump stops even cautious for that, anticipating going a little bit larger in tires on this thing because I put this thing up on the metal cloak trailer. So, I knew exactly where my bumps were for full articulation. And I couldn't find any of the BFG KM3s in the 39 inch tire in the United States. They were just not to be had. The most common size that I could find was a 37.125, but I wanted, this is the other thing, if I'm gonna go back down to 37s, I wanted a 13.5 width tire. So you can see here that the tires are just exactly the same width now. And I'll just put this uh, straight edge across here so you can see that there are literal, it is literally almost exactly one inch difference. So these are the 38, and you can see over here that it's, I'll just get it level, just it's actually just a little shy of an inch shorter there which is great which is you know because classically tires aren't exactly if they say 37s they're going to be 36 and change so i'm going to experiment with the 37 inch 13.5 now that to me since i have the jeep already set up for a 13.5 width that means i had to add wheel spacers here if you don't go back i'll put a link to the video where i talk about jeep tuning where i explain how i dial in the suspension and the tuning for things like that width of the tire and offset of the wheel so i want the 13.5 i'm going to see how the 37 inch handles that i think it's going to be pretty great especially on my Jeep, since I have 488 gearing in here, that is gonna keep, going back to 37 is gonna keep me much closer to the, or just actually dead on to the final drive ratio that the Rubicon was designed to have. Finally, let's talk about the weight of these two beastly things right here. Now, this was, when I originally weighed this brand new, was 111 pounds. 
This right here being a little bit smaller is actually heavier. It's 116 pounds just like this. And that's because this is a, a load rated E tire as opposed to a load rated C. So it's literally just a thicker carcass, thicker sidewall designed for you know carrying heavier loads. But this is supposed to have the same amount of tire wrap. They have that special architecture uh, folding, ar linear folding architecture in here that's supposed to offer the same amount of air down tire wrap that I used to get with these things right here. So I'm very curious to try that. And just good data point for you guys that this still is lighter than this tire right here. So now let's get them mounted up. To get started, you would normally let the air out of the tire first, and you could just pull the valve stem out of the valve here, or I have these power monster, the power tank monster valves, and I gotta be honest with you, um, now that I've had them for a while, I freaking love them. These things are amazing. Look at this. Now we'll put it on a bucket. Double check that there's no air in it. And you can see how the thing moves when you do that. And we'll just buzz all of the beadlock bolts out of this thing. Quick tip to get all the washers once you're done with that is just grab a magnet. And since these are all metal washers, you just come through and grab a bunch of them, harvest them. Grab a bunch more. Barrel of monkeys those back into there. Good to go, hold those. Now to get the ring off, I just pop it up. Flop it down, the ring pops off. We'll just uh, give that a quick once over just to get, and if there's any jagged edges, I just kind of just hit that with a angle disc and just grind that stuff smooth. That's one good thing about having non-painted aluminum. And then we just flip the wheel over and we'll break the bead and get this tire off of here. Now this is a good opportunity to use a high highfalutin tool that I don't actually own. My buddy Joe let me borrow his. This is a thing called a XB550 Heavy Duty Bead Buster. Now this thing is awesome. I normally would use a high lift jack and the bumper of my, you know, whatever vehicle I have to help push these beads off of this thing because they're on there pretty darn good. This thing uh, is a handy dandy tool that I'll show you that does that for you. Now it's about 220 bucks, so it's a little pricey, but that's why you have good friends like Joe. Thanks, Joe. So tuck it in here, tighten up that side and then down you go. There we go. And we'll do the tire dance to get it the rest of the way off. There we go. Boom, wheels off. Fairly low energy way to do that. So now it's time to make a few changes to the wheel before we get the new tire on. I've read that these, the valve stems are a good thing to replace every few years when you do tire changes. So for now to get that one out, I have to just, I'm going to just cut right here. Okay, should be able to just pull, pull that out just like that. And then inside here, you'll notice all the wheel weights from the last time this got mounted up. It's time to pull all those out and we're gonna go ahead and clean this thing up really good. So that means all of these just come out. This is what, that area where all the wheel weights were, and I just used some uh, acetone and a uh, scraper to get that stuff clean. And now that you have a perfect surface for your wheel guy to balance up your new wheel, your new wheels and tires to perfection. Now let me point out one other thing we're gonna do before we wash these off and see this little 
uh, ring of rubber right here. This is really baked on into this little crease right here. Now this is where the bead of the other tire sat and at super low pressures, you could see that just gummed up in there. And, and I don't want this to interfere with the bead of our new tire. So I'm gonna take a wire wheel on a drill motor and just clean this off. Probably overkill, but that's me. There you go, nice and smooth, overkill, just like I like it. Now it's time to clean this bad boy, and you can see that that Z36 pads and rotors, the power stop stuff, actually works. That is after I pressure washed it after the big trip, but I haven't actually had these off to really do a clean on them, and they look amazingly well. So now for the cleaning, I am all about the super clean all wheel cleaner. Now be careful, this stuff is strong. So when you do it full strength, no water, like we're gonna do right here, it can stain your wheels and you may have to go and polish them again afterwards. I was kind of warning you guys about that on the engine clean. But so for this inside in the back here, I will go full strength. Now just be remembered, get some experience with this stuff before you do this first. So we'll go full strength into the back of this thing like this. Just spray it in there, get it all around. Then I'll put a little bit. You'll get your feel, but this stuff is magic. And I use this on the tires as well. So let's get in here now that I got a wet brush and kind of just massage it around. And then this will also help keep, that's just about the right amount of time to have this stuff really dig into the dirt and not into the aluminum. And you can see that it is making it look brand spanking new in there. So now we'll get that rinsed out. Now from the front, we have the water from the backside already in here. So we have a bit of a dilution and you just want to just get after it up in here in the front. So get this out of our way and let's just get after it. And this will, this will take all of the water stains that build up in the little lip under here and then we'll run this in through everything and it just does an amazing job it's just real aggressive you just have to be ready ready to go when you're doing it and then just rinse And the other tip I have for you on using the super clean wheel cleaner is I take the spray top off of anything else. The one that comes with this is uh, not great. Doesn't work well for me. I ended up wearing my hand out using it. So I just grab one off the Windex and throw it on there. That's it. And there you go, spotless wheels. So this is the valve stem we're gonna replace the rubber one with. Has a little bend on it. Stem is locked in for the TPMS sensor. I have just some 3M molding adhesive here, this adhesive tape. And I'll stick this right in this little valley right there. We'll see how that does. I have no idea if that'll hold. I'm pretty sure it will. Don't care if it doesn't. I like having TPMS, it's a nice luxury, but we'll be fine without. Now it's actually time for some mounting action. Now that we've got our wheel cleaned and all of our accessories mounted inside there. It's time to pick which you want to be the outward facing. So I know I want the other side of this tire on that. And I'm gonna just go ahead and spray a little bit of soapy water in here just to help accentuate this process. And then we just stuff this down in there. I said, we just stuff this down in there. Ooh. Then you just kind of center it. Whoa, that happened a little too easy. All right, let me bring you in and show you what I'm looking for here. And that's just a nice even bead inside the beadlock ring here. Ooh, that happened really easy. See what I'm looking for is that the actually mounting edge of the tire is absolutely perfectly down inside here. Now it's interesting that that just, 
it doesn't always do that. It just literally flopped right on there. I have actually wrestled with this for several minutes and it's back breaking because you're like over the bucket trying to get this, but that's it. So that, that bead just sits right inside there. You want to make sure that it's flush down on that inner grip lip down inside there and you're good to go. So now we're going to go ahead and put the anti-seize inside all of these things and uh, start tightening up the ring. Do a final sanity check. Our bead is in perfect position still. We haven't bumped that. We haven't gotten anti-seize all over us and we'll just start putting these bolts in place. Now that we have everything in and it's kind of centered up perfectly, nothing's moved on us, I'm just gonna buzz them down with this thing in kind of a cross pattern just to get everything cinched down, then we'll torque it. The instructions for the Vision Manx is two passes with the torque wrench, 10 foot pounds and then the 20 foot pounds. And so I'll do that now. Just read the instructions on yours. Uh, I've seen them go all the way up to 35, 50 foot pounds on these things. So these really just, cause there's so many of them, they don't really go that tight. So we'll just buzz around and start torquing them up. We want to fill it with some air to seat this rear bead. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of that soapy water down in here to encourage that movement. And that's overboard because watch, I'll take an extra step even when I do this. So we'll make sure that our monster valve is closed and then check this out. This is one of my favorite things about this is it's the actual air chuck that fills it. Quick check and now we'll go ahead and put some air in this thing and we'll pop that bead down there. Just to make sure. Our gauge should kick on here as soon as it starts seeing it. I see seven, eight. Bam, all right. There we go. We now have our tire mounted up ready to rock. Now it's too late today for me to go get these balanced up before I stuff them under the Jeep here. So tomorrow morning we'll take them over to the tire shop, get them balanced and check out the Jeep with its new shoes. Be fun, right? Tires are balanced and ready to mount back up. And there's a couple of things I want to address really quick before we get these back on here. Now, I'm going to make some suspension tuning things. If you guys watch that video, go watch that. Uh, I talk about how you constantly change, or I constantly change the suspension on the Jeep uh, as it gets, as I set it up, as I encounter different types of terrain and things like that. So now that I'm going down in tires, I'm going to pull a bump stop out of this thing. I can't, I don't have time to do it today. I got to work tonight in downtown LA and uh, I'm playing a photographer in a com car commercial. Uh, and so I want to take the Jeep down there. So I want to get this thing back on the road as quickly as I can. Uh, I have the lockable cargo storage in the back there. So I like to take this if I'm going to bring some extra gear with me because I just like that peace of mind. Even though the Tahoe is great in downtown LA stuff because it's so under the radar, I just like that lockable storage. I have the cargo dog in the back of this thing. So uh, I'll do that in an upcoming video. I'll continue to tune it, but but it's nice to be able to know that now that I have that tire, I have my wheel spacers on so I can accommodate the width, but because I'm going down in size, I can actually now take a spacer, a bump spacer out and get even more up travel. I'll be curious to catch up to the Metal Cloak CTI trailer guys and find out if I can increase my score from 900 up because now I'm adding back more travel because of a smaller tire. So all of these things are part of the fun. And for those of you with the eagle eye, these center caps that I got for this aren't from Vision. They're just some uh, cheapy Amazon ones I found that had the right center dimension here. I'll put the, a link to those 
uh, in my Amazon store, just in case you have the vision wheels. But it's something that you could just do. I just found, just measured the inside diameter and then just pop these in. I still like this thing. I'm kind of in a hurry. I don't want to be late for work. Uh, I do want to show you the final bit of this. Like you got to take your tire from brand new tire to looking like brand new tire. And that's that same stuff. I'm going to take some super clean and some of the Lucas stuff I've been using for a while. And let me show you how to do this real quick. So for the tire itself, same stuff, but I start with wet. So that way it gives you that little buffer here. So we're just going to wet it down. We'll get our super clean on there. And this way it gives us some time in case this gets on the wheel a little bit. Okay, and then you take a medium brush and just brush it. And it'll take all of the new tire markings and all that stuff off of there. Take this guy. Get into the ribs, <laughs> giggle, giggle. Watch this. See this little puddle right here? You gotta either blow that out or backing that out something. Now normally I would let this dry a little bit more before I put on my Lucas tire trim and shine, but time is of the essence at the moment. So I'll just show you what this stuff does right here. It, this is amazing. I like it even more than the pledge. And then just get a nice bit of that on and a soft brush. And look at that. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. A little bit too much water in here in the tread still, but you guys will get the idea. You know what I'm talking about. Let's step back and see what we got. So there we have it. The Auto Edge Jeep is back to the beginning and built on BFG. I'm really excited to see where these tires will take us over the next several thousand miles. Uh, I'm excited to see what this compound is really like and if it's, you know, what I've seen all those great drivers uh, do with them, I'm gonna try to do that. And I'm gonna start cold tire pressure, 30 PSI, and we'll see how the wear goes from there. And you guys will be along for the ride. So thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, enjoy your drive. Okay, gotta go to work.